of it, then? Oh, not doing too badly, thanks. I'm just slipping down to see my daughter for a minute. You'll be all right, won't you? Don't you worry yourself about me. I'll just take her a few of these. <laughs> Whatever am I doing? Here, check for them. I wouldn't dream of it. Now, don't be so soft. This shop is yours now. You don't want it to turn in good customer way. I won't be above an hour. Highlighters, please. Highlighters, now where are they? Oh, here they are. Do you know how much you usually pay for them, love? No, I've never bought them here before. It's all right, they're marked. That'll be enough of them. Ta. Are you the owner of these premises? Yes. And do you know what the correct time is? Just on a quarter to eight. And do you realize that by selling me these, you've broken the law? Sorry, but I don't know what you're getting at. Uh, perhaps I'd better explain. We're police officers. Well, uh, must be a bit dense. Under a local bylaw, you're not allowed to sell perishable or non-perishable goods after 7 o'clock in the evening. Can I have your name, please? Florence Lena Lindley. Florence. What can I sell, then? Lena Lindley. Will I have to come with you to the police station? What's the address of this shop, please? 15 Coronation Street. I said, we'll have to come with you to the police station because I will... I'll have to go and get my coat. You'll be receiving a summons in due course. What will they do to me? Fred, I can't say. That'll depend on the local magistrate. See? Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. I've just slipped back to take her them ornaments I said she could have. Whatever's the matter? I didn't know to shut up shop at seven. You never told me. Eh? That young couple that was from the police. Oh, heck, I never thought they'd start that lark again. Oh, it's all my fault, love. It is, really. I should have warned you. Every now and then, this swoop. What will they do to me? Oh, it'll only be fine. It won't be much. Will my name get in the papers? Oh, that's nothing. What will people think? Whatever are you up to? Hmm? Oh, I might have known. Small things amuse small minds. You'll change your tune when I come up with my 75,000. I will think on and put cross on. First dividend or no first dividend, I don't want any publicity. Hey, I can just see myself standing on stage at Luxy, receiving my cheque and getting a kiss from a film star. <laughs> what some women will do for a living. <laughs> Evening, Martha. Evening. Have you got a packet of crisps? Friends! All right, all right. Grandma's getting them. I'll bring you out a bottle of lemonade to drink on step. Yeah. Give yeah. us some more crisps down. We're out. It's our Lily Sandra. Oh, your little granddaughter. Hi. I'm minding her. Poor little thing. She fell down and hurt her leg. Sobbing her little heart out, she is. And nothing will calm her down like a packet of crisps. She'd been eating Chris so far she could talk. Here I say. Have them Barlow's got a car? Barlow's at number three? Aye. Not as I know of. Well, there's one standing outside their door. I'm sorry, love. We weren't expecting company. Mm. Don't worry about me, Mrs. Barlow. Oh, David, get that thing out at road. Oh. I'm not telling you a word of a lie. Let two of them loose together for five minutes and they turn the place into a proper tin. Yeah, now, you be quiet. I'll take clock apart again. <laughs> What are you doing here? Well, that's a nice way to greet a person. Do you fancy a cup of tea, love? I'd love one. Oh, where are you off? I'm off to put kettle on. Well, that's something new. We haven't done that in years. Oh, David, get out from under oh, my feet. Um, think on you don't fill the kettle for the old street. Well, I should think at my time of life I could be trusted to fill a kettle. I can tell by the time you're putting too much on it. Here we're having not hot water bottles. Here, I don't know. Do it yourself, I'd... Oh, yeah? Fine. Look, uh, we've obviously got to have this tea, otherwise she'll be offended, but after that, let's make a quick dash for it. Where to? Oh, into town. Oh, don't let's bother about town. What about that funny little Victorian pub on the corner? You mean the Rover's Return? You should just see inside. That's exactly what I want to do. You won't mind sterilising her, will you, dear? Hey, is that yours? 
that turn that car on? No, it's not mine. It's my father's. I borrowed it. Hey, kids, never mind. I'll soon ship them. Well, it's a bit much, I must say, when you won't sell a lady two ounces of boiled ham. I'm sorry, but I dare. I just found out I haven't a serve after seven o'clock at night. I was just going to change the notice when you come in. Oh, don't be daft. Nobody bothers about that. Look here, Elsie Lappin. I've been coming in this shop for donkey's years. What's the trouble this time? Two ounces of boiled ham. That's what the trouble this time is. Well, you can't have it. Well, that's a new one on me. Aye, it's a new one on all of us, but you still can't have it. Why, has it been bother? Nothing that should worry you. Oh, then there has been bother. Well, I don't know what I'm going to do for my supper. I was banking on that boiled ham. My belly will think me throat. But... Hello, Christine. Oh, you look washed out, love. Is everything all right? I'm afraid we're shut. Never heard the like. Mrs. Sharples, I want to have a word with you. What, me? Yes, and now's as good a time as any other. What about? Me, ma'am. Oh, the poor soul. I want you to stop going round saying them things about her. What things? I haven't been saying anything. No, you don't want to be so touchy just because your mum's gone pots for rags. You see, not... there you go again, pots for rags. Well, she has, hasn't she? What do you want me to say? Listen, my mother's had a nervous breakdown and she's gone into hospital to get better. And if you must know, I don't want you to say anything. Just mind your own business for a change. Well, you ought to, madam. You want your bottom smacking, Miss Christine Hardman. That's what you want. Have you ever heard the like a bit of a kid like her telling me what? Now, just shut it and listen. I am telling you. You'd better watch it. Because if you don't, a solicitor's letter, that's what you'll be getting. Right. Did your mother or did she not stand screaming blue murder in the middle of Coronation Street at two o'clock in the morning? Shouldn't have thought it kept you up. Up, the whole street was up. And my lady, the following morning, was not the receiving officer sent for. Listen, you want to listen to this conversation, you might be called upon to remember it. You, your little... Tina, we're having no language in this shop. Oh, that's right. Take her side, I would. Nobody's taking sides with anybody. That's right. I don't know what's coming to this place. First of all, you deny me my boiled ham, and then you stand here and watch me get insulted. Bah, it's been a right eye-opener, this has. Now, look here, Inna. We've enough trouble here of our own without you stirring more up. Oh, you're in some sort of bother, eh? Just like that time in the war with those ration folks, wasn't it? Well, that's a nice thing to say. Oh, I know. Nothing was ever proved, but it doesn't stop a body from thinking. Ah, yes, these are the times when you find out who your true friends are. By heaven, they don't want you when you're old. Well, I may be only an old pensioner with a bit of money in my pocket, but from now on, I'll be spending it elsewhere. And as for you, you want to take a grip on yourself, things like that, running families. Ah, as long as you've got a spare wheel, Susan, we're all right. The on the other did it. What my dad thinks he's doing, standing out there looking at it. Oh, little devils, I'm at six-inch nails in the tyres. That's how they did it. Them scratches on the bonnet don't amount to much. I'll leave this here to brew for a minute. Well, put the coffee on. I am sorry about this. All I'm worried about is what my father's going to say. Oh, dear, you're going to get in bother? Oh, I expect it'll be all right. Are those the photographs? Aye. Right. Oh, for heaven's sake, you don't want to look at those. Why not? I think photographs are very interesting. So do I. Well, you can turn that page over for a start. Why, well, you've got a clean nappy on. Let me tell you, you're a lot less trouble then than you are now. Oh, and there's him in his first long pants at the Whitwick Walks. I've still got one of myself somewhere. Oh, very self-willed I was as a child. All the other kids had wreaths and veils and posies, but me, I had to have a porky bonnet and a crook. Oh, I've never <laughs> seen this picture. I've still got it in my handbag upstairs. Hang on, I'll just nip up and get it. Have you got a jack, Susan? No. Oh. Sorry. Oh, well, it's all right. There's a fellow up the road I can borrow one off. The only trouble is he's on overtime. Won't be home till nine o'clock. Oh, well, that's us stuck here for the evening.
Ma'am, I don't know what's the matter with me nose. Nothing seems to stick on it these days. That's worry. Your makeup never does go on straight when you're worried. What's that shade of lipstick you're using? Kiss and tell. We've heard the like. The advert and the chemist said it was the lipstick for the young at heart. For me, I feel about 900. Are you really not going back to him? I don't know. Yes, I do, really. No, ma'am, I'm not going back to him. Why do you have to go and marry a pole for? That's what I want to know. He said the same thing when I was engaged to Roy. Oh, Yanks, poles, what's the difference? I felt like having something different. Mm, you're telling me. When you were caught in, this house was like the League of Nations. History, as you might say, is repeating itself, isn't it? Have you seen my dad recently? <laughs> he didn't see me, though. He's coming out of his shoe shop with a parcel under his arm. Have you ever thought about getting a divorce? I've thought about it, but that's all. You thinking of going in for one? No grounds. Do you think he'll come after you? Pardon? Hmm. Yeah. Put him for some fun and games, then. All dressed up and nowhere to go. Nothing on telly. It's broke. Oh. Here, have a comic. But, uh... Tonight. I'm not deaf. I heard you the first time. Uh, what's up? Nothing was up. Good night. <laughs> Isn't it about time you was getting changed, or do you intend to stop all night in your old bowling cardigan? Oh, I've still got one or two things to see to, love. How's Lucille? Fred, she's fretting, love. That orphanage is no place for her. She should be at home. Yeah, you're dead right she should, but who's going to look after her? It's about time you were thinking of getting married again. Fine bargain I'd make. Now, there's a lot of big lad to have you. Aye, right. you just find me one, that's all. Now, you want to watch out what you're saying? I might take you up on that. <laughs> <laughs> well? Where's my clean shirt? Where do you think it is? It's on the bed. And what are you standing there looking so gormless for? I'd just like to know what I've done, that's all. I bet you would. Now, listen, your shirt's on the bed, and for heaven's sake, get moving. Please get moving. I want to have a bite of something to eat before the rush starts. That's got a familiar look to it, doesn't it? That's to me, too. Well, I can't stand it talking. Hello. Good night, Harry. <clears throat> Are you all right, boys? Yes, thank you. <laughs> for the time of the year, isn't it? <laughs> oh, yes. yes. Uh, funny weather we are having. Ah, <laughs> the weather. Oh, yes. <laughs> Doesn't seem to be able to make up its mind what to do, does it? No. <laughs> no. Could I have another half a pint of bitter, please? Oh, you like bitter, then. Excuse me. Excuse me asking, but you're not English, are you? No. Ukrainian? 
Uh, no, no, I'm not your friend. Anymore. Well, why I asked that was that there's some of them has come to work round here. Do you work round here? No, I don't. But I've seen you in here before, haven't I? I know your face. You're right, you have seen me, yes. Now, who are you with? Now, don't tell me. Let me guess. <laughs> no, I give up. Sharp! I'm afraid I do not understand. I give up. Sharp! Excuse me. Come on, Martha, sup up. It's your turn. So I thought to myself, I thought, well, Christine Hartman, I wouldn't like to be you on the Day of Judgment when you have to answer to the good Lord for all the things you've said to me tonight. Oh, the young people of today. Mind you, you have to speak as you find. And some folks is different. Now, take my youngest daughter's husband. Oh, you're Lily's will. Oh, he's a lovely young fella. He's learning the car, isn't he? Aye. Took me to Morecambe last Tuesday. And believe me, I never opened my purse all night. Hey. Who's that? Where? Yonder. That gypsy-looking fella, isn't it? Public. Never saw him in my life before. I have. It's that pole that Linda Tanner married. I keep some prop. This it's dead daft. Oh, they all are, but I can't seem to break myself of them somehow. Ooh, where'd you get them from? I do. They are Dennis's. Mm. Wonder where he's slammed off to. I don't know. Can't have gone far. He's got no money, that I do know. You know him, that wouldn't stop him. I'm fed up. Well, what am I supposed to do about it? Couldn't we do something? Go out for chips if you want. Uh, moth chips. I'll tell you what. Let's go and have one. Oh, where's it to go? The corner. Oh, you don't want to go there. It's a dead alive hole. There's nobody there. You've been a deader than it is here. Oh, and I think of some of the places I got into during the war. You know something? I went past one of those places the other day and I, I just stood there looking at it. You must have looked the right sight standing gawping with your shopping bag. <laughs> Commissioner looked at me a bit funny, but I just stared him out. I thought, yes, Tiddles, you wouldn't be looking so superior if this was 1942 and I was sweeping in with one of my Yankee officers. Oh, do you know officers? Oh, in them days I knew everybody. I tell you, if it hadn't been for you and our Dennis, I'd be shut of your father by now and out in Arizona. Them Yanks was all right. Even counting them that was left three years ago. Oh, I had some smashing times. I'm free with the money. I never had so much as to buy a pair of stockings in two years. <laughs> do you remember the first time I had canned beer? That was when you was engaged to Roy, wasn't it? Yeah. Oh, do I not? Them was good days. Do you and I haven't got out much? Do we Ella's like? You must go to the pictures. I won't go. It's expensive. See, it says it's a waste of money, and I'm blown if I'm queuing up for one and nines for all the world to see with the wind blowing round your ankles. Do you mean to sit there and tell me that you're stopping night in and night out? Yeah. Oh, I did take me out to some club for poles once. Well, what was it like? Oh, I don't know. It was all in foreign language. So now we're just staying. Well, there's one thing. I've got something nice to look at. You must admit it's smashing looking. What do you mean, I've got something? I've left him. I suppose he's handsome enough in summer when he's brown. But this time of year, his face has got a sort of yellowish tinge. Oh, come on, ma'am. Patch your face up. It could be much deader at the corner than it is here. I'll swap Superman for Rover's return any day. Hey, you know, you've got to say one thing about our David. He soon gets things under control. Hey, where are they gone? He's taking her next door to meet Esther. Well, I think he might have stopped like an offer to help. Oh, I told him not to bother. He's no good at things like that. He's not mechanically minded. <laughs> you mean he's unfisted? <laughs> Hello, lad. How's it going? Ah, not the spare wheel on. It's been on the flat side, though. Well, surely she's got a pump. Pump? You haven't as much as she's got a spanner. <laughs> What sort of man must her father be to let her out without him? You know, I'm beginning to wonder whether he knows she's got it. Well, you'll know all right when he sees his bonnet. <laughs> Look, I won't be a minute, love. Hello. All right, thanks. Hey. Hmm? What about our Ken, then? Well, what about him? 
girl in it. Oh, get away with you. They're just good friends. The bridegroom's mother was tastefully attired in oh, pink chiffon. Oh, very funny. <laughs> Mark, come to think about it, I want to have a word with you. Huh? What about? Are you going to get that rise? Well, the union's hopeful. Yes, well, think on. If you do do it, if you do get that rise, I want a bit more out of your pay packet. Uh, how much? Well, you couldn't get full board anywhere else for 30 shillings a week, and don't tell me you could. No, I and then there's your washing. All right, but I... There are no buts about it. When I was your age, I'd hand over my pay packet unopened. You know how much I got? Go on. Well, what's so funny about that? You, you know, looking on like an old hen. Won't you start and get a word in edgeways? Will you set up for a quid? No. <coughs> Well, that's all you're getting. No. Nope. not offering any more than a quid. No. Nope. Go in, go in, go on. No, nope. I only want ten shillings. I don't want you to think I'm grasping. I, I just want you to realise the proper value of money, that's all. You can put the other ten shillings on one side. Oh, I know. Thought there was a catch in it somewhere. Oh, she'll be all right. She's got a little fair in it to get it to the garage. <laughs> it's a fine thing to happen. I must say, first time our Ken brings his young lady home. Young lady? Well, that's what she is, isn't she? Hey, I don't know what's got into the pair of you. You're as bad as a couple of old women. Well, you've got to face up to it, Mother. There comes a time when the little birds have to fly from the nest. <laughs> Go on with you. <laughs> don't take any notes of him, love. <laughs> She's a nice girl, though, isn't she? Mm. She's all right. I wonder if she's on the scholarship. Oh, I wouldn't know about that. I shouldn't think it'd matter, though. You can tell she comes from running folk, can't you? No, she's not bad looking, either. Uh, she's got a nice way with her, you know, not too much tutty on her face. Mm. Yeah, what have you done with the matches, dear? Let me see huh? them. Here, look at this one. It's got uh, Walter Crane illustrations. Oh, it's little Miss Peggy. I've got it too. It was my mother's. Oh, I think this is one that belonged to Esther's sister. Uh. Presented to Ada Hayes for good conduct. Balsam Street School, 196. What a funny name for a school. Yeah, watch it. I went there. Oh, you've never got that bookcase open again. Oh, I think some of these old children's books are absolutely terrific. Well, if it weren't for Kenneth, I'd have fired him years ago. But when I so much as mentioned it, he nearly raises cane. I don't blame him. Oh, I don't know. I should have thought young people at colleges had something more interesting to think about. Oh, is that my front door? I think so. Just see. Excuse me. Look, um, if you can't speak, shall we go into town? Why? Well, nothing very amusing around here. What about the fascinating little pub on the corner? I've heard the Rovers call some things in my time, but never fascinating. Come on in, love. Oh, I didn't realise you had company. This is Christine from up the street, and this is a friend of Kenneth's. Her name's Susan. Hello. Pleased to meet you. Oh, we're just off, Esther. Right, you are. Well, don't forget he brings you to see me next time you're over. I will. Bye. Bye. Bye, Ken. Bye. 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 Well, I hope I haven't driven them away. Don't talk so soft. Sit yourself down. Thanks very much. Oh, come on, love, you know you can tell me. What's the trouble? Oh, come on, come on, where's your anky? Oh, it's a terrible thing. Oh, here you are. Use this. Thanks very much. Now, what's the trouble? Is it money? No, it's not that. You're sure? I'm positive it. Well, it's just that you know where they took my mother? To hospital. But you know which one? Well, what's the difference? It's still hospital. Well, I know that, but, well, it's people like Ina Sharples. What's she been saying? Oh, you know, Ina. No, oh, I can imagine. Some folk, they make me tired. They do, really. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, excuse me, please. And I can never make up my mind which I like best. Lemonade or ginger beer? What, Shandale? I've only got one kind here. Sorry there's no ice, but this morning this wasn't exactly the writ. Will you stop it? What? Apologising for everything. Give me credit for a bit of sense. I wasn't expecting to find the Duchess of Devonshire in here. Well, it's just that this isn't the sort of place you've been used to. It, you so. mean I live in what's known as a nice residential suburb? Well, what's so marvellous about that? I know a whole lot of people up at college with us who'd really look down their noses at that. And anyway, my grandfather lives in a house that's exactly like yours. So don't think you've got the sole rights on the coronation streets of this world. Because you haven't. Hey, now Florrie Ledbetter's gone. Who do you lay now? Hey, who laid Florrie out, anyway? Oh, Connie Tinsley. Well, she's not laying a finger on me. You know, sometimes I think I'm just about ready to go off down to that cemetery. But if I had my way, I'd just like to go like my mother did. Hey, that were a beautiful ending. Oh, lovely. She just sat up. Broke wind and died. Oh. We all have in the same again, girls. I don't mind if I do. Hey, up, Martha, quick. You're missing some good at public. Hello, Linda. What do you think you're doing here, Ivan Trubisky? 